First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 through 13. Guys, I'm a little high on the mic. So. This is our call to worship. As you turn to First Chronicles chapter 16, on this day in the history of Israel, you can imagine and picture the scene with me. Of the elders of Israel, the people of God are led by David, their king, and they're making their way up along a dirt highway through crowded throngs of worshipers into Jerusalem to the stronghold of Zion. David is flanked by his mighty men. If you can imagine, the linens of the Levites are in the, the white linen robes of their service, and they were carrying before them the Ark of the Covenant. And if you know what the Ark of the Covenant is, the Ark of the Covenant essentially uh, the mercy seat. Uh, it had a, the, sometimes called the cover of atonement and the, the Ark of the Covenant, said to be where the presence of God was to dwell among his people, has been in exile for nearly a century. Remember the battles that took place in the Old Testament? The Philistines had captured the Ark, and the Ark had not been with them. And now it is that they're leading this procession and bringing the Ark up into Jerusalem for the worship of God in the tabernacle. Every time the procession took six steps, they stopped to offer sacrifice before taking the seventh. Imagine the trip into Jerusalem. And for the first time in centuries, the sound of music would have echoed in the worship of God's people. That's interesting uh, to think about that. We're just talking about the sound of God's people singing. For the first time in centuries, the sound of music would be heard in the praise of Yahweh. Trumpets, horns, cymbals, lyres, harps, singing, if you can imagine, at the top of their lungs, praise and worship to our God. At the head of the procession, David, the great king, uh, dancing like a fool, wearing a linen ephod, right? The, the celebratory, enthusiastic, fervent worship of God's people for God, for their deliverer, for their strength, for their refuge. Up until this point, really the silence or the, the worship of Israel would have been largely in silence. If you think about the, the tabernacle in the wilderness and all the sacrifices that took place, um, often one day a year on the Day of Atonement, there would have been confession made. You'd have heard the sound of trumpet. Uh, trumpet. You might have heard the sound of a trumpet at morning and evening sacrifices. But other than that, the worship largely took place in silence. You would have heard the bleeding of sheep, right? The lowing of cattle. But beyond that, quiet until this time. And as the Ark of the Covenant, again, symbolizing God's presence, is being brought into the tabernacle in Jerusalem, worship in a, a Davidic revival, you could say, bursts out in song. Why is that? The presence of God among his people. The presence of God among his people. We sing, when we sing and worship in hymns, songs, and spiritual songs, we're celebrating celebrating the presence of God among his people. Not now through the atonement of blood, the blood of bulls and goats, and the mere cover, as it were, of a mercy seat, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, his own son, having atoned for our sins once and for all at the cross. And now God's people sing. <laughs> and there is uh, exuberant worship with song and with music and with praise uh, in the worship of our Davidic king, in the worship of our God. So re read with me on uh, this text, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning in verse 7. On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. And listen, you and I, are the seed of Abraham by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he tells us, look at verse 23. 
Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Now think of the context. Up until now, again, worship was largely in silence. Now proclaiming, sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Look at verse 34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And say, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather us together. Deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen. and they praised the Lord. Stand with me and let's sing. Father in heaven, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. And you thank you for this time to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the glory of your name. Be with us now as we worship you. Inhabit the praise of your people for the glory of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the glory of your own name. We pray these things. Amen. Amen.